The crisis over Ukraine has entered another week with failed diplomatic efforts and fresh attempts to defuse tensions. Ukraine is calling for a meeting with Russia and other members of European, uh, the European Security Group, the country's foreign minister, uh, making that request via the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE. Ukraine says a meeting with Russia is now urgent. It's demanding an explanation for Moscow's military activities on its borders. But Moscow has not responded to that request yet. The German Chancellor Olaf Scholz is in Kiev for talks with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. The two leaders discussing Ukraine's ongoing standoff with Russia. And the German Chancellor is also expected to discuss ways to stabilize Ukraine's economy after the fear of war took a toll on its currency. Ukraine can be sure that we will show the necessary solidarity as we have done in the past. Germany is the country with the largest financial assistance that we have launched for Ukraine's economic stabilization compared to all the others. And we will continue to do so and make our contribution in this respect and at the same time help to ensure that this dual strategy is continued. Clear messages about what will happen in the event of military aggression and at the same time use all possible means to ensure that there is a peaceful development out of the crisis and that Russia de-escalates the situation. Schultz will fly to Moscow tomorrow where he will hold talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Kremlin says the two leaders will discuss the Ukraine crisis, security guarantees and the possibility of sanctions on Nord Stream 2. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK has created some confusion with his latest statements on the country joining NATO. In an interview with the BBC, Vadi Pristaiko was quoted as saying that Kiev might drop its its NATO bid to join the alliance, but the ambassador later walked those comments back, saying the country's aspiration for NATO membership is, in fact, enshrined in its constitution. Is it a consideration currently that Ukraine will reconsider its ambitions to join NATO? No, this is not, and that's I'm quite happy that I have this chance talking to you to clarify my position. What I told him, that we are not a member of NATO right now, and to avoid war, we are ready for many concessions, and that's what we are doing in our conversations with Russians. But it has nothing to do with NATO, which, which is enshrined in the Constitution. And when he was asked about whether Ukraine's commitment to joining NATO has shifted, the ambassador replied with a curt no. Commitment of Ukraine becoming a member of NATO that hasn't shifted? No. The British government continues to back Ukrainian sovereignty and the right to determine its own foreign policy and its own international ambitions. It's for the ambassador to speak on behalf of his country, it's for Ukraine to set their policy. It's for us as an international community to safeguard their sovereignty and their right to choose which way they want to go and to support them in that decision. Meanwhile, the Kremlin says that it does not view the ambassador's comments as an official change in Ukraine's position on wanting to join NATO. But Moscow added that it would significantly help address Russia's security concerns if Kiev did indeed renounce its intention to become an alliance member.